Hello and welcome dear viewer to a short add-on video for my how to create your conscript video and two or three people asked me in the comments about ligatures and contextual forms so I want to address that in this video. Now it's really fun because all of the things I'm going to explain right now were changed just in the recent update of Bird Font, I think and they made the process a lot easier. First of all, what are ligatures? Ligatures are a way for fonts to replace individual character sequences. So if you think about the FI character sequence, then you see that the stroke of the F goes over the dot of the I. We fix that by using a ligature that states whenever F and I come in sequence in text, we replace them, their individual characters by a combined character, which has this sort of dot of the I goes into the stroke of the F and so on. And this is the normal way of using ligatures, but we can also use them to make our abugidas and our conscripts in general more usable. First of all, you want to create all of your base glyphs and all of your placeholder glyphs. So base glyphs are sort of the glyphs that can stand on their own, like I have an example abugida here, which has the this base K character and then characters for each of the vowels E, A, E, I and O. If we look here, I have also created these placeholder glyphs for the A, E, I and O characters, which uh, is simply placeholder, of course. So these have to be created because otherwise you couldn't type an I and if you then wanted to type K, I and want K, I to be replaced by this combined K, I character, it won't work because there is no I character in your font. So you have to create all of these placeholder glyphs, first of all. And now, second, you create your ligature characters. Now, the method that is done in BirdFont was just changed recently. So you can see if I click on the info button for one of the ligatures, you can see there is no Unicode code point in here because this character isn't associated with any code point like I showed in the previous episode where we use the private use area. This is just a code point that is just floating around in space somewhat. To create that we go into the menu, go into ligatures and add a ligature. And now this menu is new, but what you want to do is type in the name of the ligature and type in the character sequence that it should replace. Now we have to change this later because the input method here is a bit fucked up, but we can just try this. Let's say we want KOE to be a ligature, so we type in the name. And now I usually put an underscore after that because I want to distinguish it from just a character sequence, K-O-E. And what is also important is that you don't use any spaces in this name. And now we can just shortly type in whatever here. It doesn't matter, we have to change this anyways. And then we click on add ligature and this nice menu will pop up. If you notice, we have opened a new font editing tab with this new character. And if we go into the overview, we discover that it has appeared here and it doesn't have a code point. So it's a um, ligature character. And now assume that I've already created all of these and they are all just ligature characters and they have all the special name with the character sequence they will represent. So for example, K and A and then the an underscore just to distinguish them from the normal sequence. So let's again go into the menu, go into ligatures, go into show ligatures, and this will open a menu that looks like this. And this will also be used for contextual substitutions. We will get to that later. Now, you can see here, we have our, oops, we have our ligatures. And these are simply two entries. The left entry is which ligature character and the right entry is what code points that ligature character actually replaces. Now I'm shortly going to delete that KOE ligature because that is created automatically and we want to edit that manually because most of the time um, we need some special, some special sequences here. And so you have to imagine this on the right is sort of a, sp a special input field. So on the left, of course, you have to input your exact ligature name. This example is done with K and I, and so I use the ligature name of the KI ligature, which has an underscore after it, as I just told you, to distinguish it from the KI sequence. Now, 
Let's add a ligature. So the annoying part about the new menu is that if you click on new ligature here, you have to again type in your ligature and your character sequence. And we don't want actually this character to exist because we just want to create a new substitution for, for example, our K and A characters. So I will have just have to deal with this and delete that and go back to the tab. And now let's put in our K A underscore ligature here. And on the right, put in the text we want to rip, have it replace. Now this is very important. You have to type in the exact Unicode character that you want to replace and every Unicode character that should um, be replaced, so should be part of the ligature sort of, must be separated by a single space. This is also a reason why you can't put spaces into ligature names because you can type in other ligatures here and you can type in U plus sequences for Unicode here. So what we want is a K and then a space and then an A. So we want the ligature KA underscore, this special character we created, to replace the characters capital K, capital A in sequence. Let's just do that. And now we want to create another ligature. We want the ligature K E underscore to be replaced by the sequence K E. Now just you could now do this for all of them and now we get to K A E. Now this is special because ligatures are their own sort of symbol in the font. If you type in a character sequence like K A and it gets replaced by the K A underscore ligature by this guy here. Then if you, for example, want to type in the K-A-E ligature, so um, you type in another E because of course it's K-A-E, then it won't work because on the left there's the K-A underscore symbol sort of and on the right there's the normal E symbol, which you don't have a rule for. So you have to create a special rule. So the ligature we want to replace is still K-A-E. And now what characters do we want to have replaced. Now this is special. You don't just type in KAE because that again would replace when you're typing would first replace K and A with the this KA underscore symbol and then it won't sort of execute this detection mechanism. So what you want to do instead is put in the KA ligature itself like this. And that's exactly the reason why you can't or shouldn't put spaces into ligature names, so these underscore guys, because then if you put a space in there, it would recognize it as two separate characters and would, would just screw up and wouldn't work. So that's important. And that's also why I prefer the underscore naming, because now I can clearly say, see, okay, this first part of the replacement sequence is a ligature itself and the second part is a normal character. Now it will depend on your font processing system, so whether you use a word processor like Word or LibreOffice, some other just regular text editor. If you use LaTeX, I would think that this won't work, so playing it safe. Again, adding another ligature, and now that we have this ligature, let's just put in as the name again, put in KAE as the ligature name, and so we have two replacements that will result in the KAE ligature. And now just type in K and A and E regularly. And this will work with all systems that don't immediately put in ligatures like probably LaTeX. These both will result in KAE, which is perfectly fine because of course they don't intersect. Now let's just try that out. We go into the spacing tab up here, control I also. I type a K character, you see it's a K, and now I type a capital A, and it got replaced with the KA character. Now, bird font is a bit different, so if you again put that in and you press the backspace character, it will delete the entire ligature. That probably won't happen if you use something like Word or LibreOffice. Just to demonstrate, I want to put in KI and KO, I probably 
didn't specify, but you can imagine if KO is specified, it would replace that as well. Now let's try our KAE. So if we type in KA again, it is replaced, but if we type in additional E, it will replace that with the KAE sequence. That's all very great. Now, one final note, you will have to enable ligatures in some font processing or uh, text processing systems. I know for sure that Microsoft Word on default doesn't enable um, ligature processing or ligatures in general. So you have to go into the advanced font settings and again on the advanced tab and then lig uh, click ligatures and select all and on default it's none. And that's a bit annoying, of course. Now, finally, I want to look at contextual forms just shortly and honestly I haven't used them a lot. Let's go back to the ligatures menu and onto the show ligature menu and the contextual substitutions have four input fields. This on the left again is the ligature, then we have the beginning which is in this case is empty, the middle and the end. A bit confusing but let me explain. This rule basically says when you have the KA ligature, or you can just put any normal character in there, or a Unicode code point. When this is in the middle, and this comes after it, and this, which is in this case is empty, but we could just put in a K or whatever, and this comes before it, we want this in the middle to be replaced by this contextual substitution. And this is very useful for conscripts that look like Arabic or Arabic itself because they have different characters for different contexts whether they are characters are in the middle in the beginning or in the end and if you just leave that out then it simply says that it doesn't matter what is in the beginning so that only it matters that this KA is followed by this KE let's try that out Spacing and kerning, spacing tab, KA, KE, if I remember correctly, that should now, if I press space exactly, that should replace the KA with a KAE, just as we specified here. And again, some font processing systems won't enable this behavior on default, or they will only enable it on Arabic or Arabic like scripts. So you have to manually go in and enable that, I would probably look up the uh, settings for your font processing system. And that's basically it. This is how you create ligatures in your conscript. I think one very important thing to keep in mind with all of this is that these characters here are not Unicode symbols like the private in the private use area. As I discussed last time, they just exist as a special character in the fonts symbol database, sort of character database. These I and K and O are all just the normal Latin characters. But these aren't, so they don't actually exist. If you type in KA or whatever and it gets replaced, and you type in KI and it gets replaced and so on, if you actually look at what data is stored on your disk, there will be the K followed by the A and K followed by the I stored. So these ligatures don't actually e exist. They just, when it comes to font rendering, the font will replace the sequences, in this case KA or KI, will replace these sequences with a single special character that isn't directly mapped to a code point, to a Unicode symbol. So that's very important to keep in mind. So you can't just sort of create these programmatically and you always have to use your font with your special ligatures. That is sort of a disadvantage. So you, if you want to create different font styles or different fonts in general for your script, you have to keep in mind that you have to copy all of these ligatures and copy all of these names and all of these special characters, which might be a hassle. And so I generally recommend to use the private use area and only use ligatures in very specific cases. But again, the contextual forms, as I just showed you, those are very useful for contextual substitutions when you want your 
script to look like Arabic or behave like Arabic. Keep in mind that ligatures aren't like intended to be used as these romanization shortcuts sort of that you can type your romanization and it inputs your special conscripts characters. Yeah, that's it for this video. And until next time, goodbye.